A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 29th November. On the front page you have BJP acts against Pragya as furor rocks house. So this is regarding Pragya Singh Thakur who is member of parliament from Bhopal in Lok Sabha and from BJP party and also she is part of parliamentary party meetings and defense panel but now she has been dropped from parliamentary party meetings and defense panel as such because of her statement which she made. So you can see she is accused in Malega of last case too and here you can see she made a statement in which she said that uh, Mahatma Gandhi's assassin is a desh, was a Desh Bhakt. That is Godse, Mathuram Godse. So she calls him a Desh Bhakt while speaking in parliament. So her remarks have resulted in opposition raising its voice against such an act and BJP acting against Pragya Singh Thakur. You can see. So here you can see Rahul Gandhi says that what Pragya Thakur is saying is at the heart of BJP and is the heart of BJP and RSS. Then below you have Pakistan Supreme Court extends army chief's tenure. So we had seen this in news that Pakistan Supreme Court had raised technical issues in this extension of army chief's tenure. But now three year extension to army chief Kamar Javed Bajwa has been provided by Pakistan Supreme Court. It has allowed the government's decision. So parliament will have to legislate on the terms of service of the top, uh, you know, top general as such. Then this is Google warned 500 Indians on fishing. fishing. So fishing is basically someone trying to steal your personal online information. So, Google has sent out 12,000 warnings to users globally, including about 500 in India during the period from July to September 2019, alerting them to government-backed phishing attempts against them. So, it's not just phishing attempts, but it's government-backed. Means, uh, government is uh, trying to get information about people. So, this comes very close to the earlier incident which has taken place of WhatsApp disclosing that Israeli spyware Pegasus which is used by governments as such it has been responsible for spying on journalists and human rights activists globally including 121 people from India and this is now Google. Below you have Lok Sabha passes bill to regularize Delhi colonies. So Lok Sabha has passed National Capital Territory of Delhi Reorganization of Property Rights of Citizens in Unauthorized Colonies Bill 2019 which will grant ownership rights to residents living in 1731 unauthorized colonies. So the bill has been passed by voice vote. So it will benefit 40 lakhs Delhiites and once enacted it will, uh, it will be put into effect you can see. It is, the question is raised on bill timing because it is very close to Delhi assembly elections. On page 9 you have, not for defense purchase worth 22,800 crores. So Defense Minister Rajnath Singh chairs the Acquisition Council meetings and you can see here that the Defense Acquisition Council has approved purchase of 6 more PHIs as such for the Navy. Uh, the proposal is from the Navy for 10 aircraft. So then, then Indian Navy also is already operating PHIs procured in two batches. So, you can see PETA is long range patrol aircraft which has been procured from US for the Indian Navy. So, 12 are procured, it wants 6 more. Then uh, you can see the, where it will be part of, it will be part of the Naval Air Squadron in Tamil Nadu. And uh, it's, uh, here its detail is given, long range maritime surveillance aircraft based on Boeing 737 commercial airline. So, it is a military surveillance aircraft but it is of Boeing from US. Then another one is AVAX. So the AVAX which will be uh, there it will be larger than the current three Netra AVAX. AVAX stands for Airborne Warning and Control Systems. So this is indigenously manufactured AVAX, Airborne Warning and Control System, which you can see this is the aircraft. So it will be larger than the current three which are there in in service, which is called Netra. So uh, these are mounted on Embraer 145 aircrafts. So here you can see above the AVAX airborne warning and control system. So I, Indian Air Force also operates three Israeli Falcon A-50 long range AVAX. So in airborne warning and control, Israeli equipments are known to be of good quality. So here we have Falcon 
and uh, Falcon is of Israel is mounted on Russian in 77 in 76 aircraft IL-76. So proposals are proposals for two more long-range Falcon AVAX as such, which has uh, which has now been given a nod, but it's waiting for approval from C Cabinet Committee on Security. So these are defense purchases which have been approved by Defense Acquisition Council. Will be worth twenty-two thousand eight hundred crores. Then this is expert panel bars release of Gopal tragedy research findings. So reports on congenital deformities in children born to women exposed to nineteen eighty-four gas leak is inconclusive, is what this committee says, and it has barred the release of research findings. In India itself, uh, research findings which are showing that babies born uh, have significantly are significantly more likely to have congenital deformities, means birth malformations, so than those born to women who have been unexposed to the uh, leaked gas in nineteen eighty four. So this study, uh, it, uh, the expert committee now says, has methodological flaws, was poorly designed, and its findings were inconclusive. So you know it was conceived in two thousand twelve. Before the present government, and you can see that it has been decided that this, even the report data would not be research findings would not be released. On the editorial page, the first editorial is widening gap. So this is regarding how India must use green technologies to boost growth and become a climate leader. So this is UN's emission gap report. So it had warned of sharp gap between. What needs to be achieved and where we are now, and at what pace we are moving. So we have to keep global temperatures from rising well below two degrees Celsius of pre-industrial times. So if temperatures rise more than that, it is it will be harmful, and ideally it should be even below 1.5 degrees Celsius. But there is huge gap you know, between what uh, is to be achieved, and here you can see even with respect to India and uh, developed countries like US, China, and EU, emissions are huge. Which need to be cut. So this editorial is talking about how India must use green technologies to boost growth and become a climate leader. And second is the PM is his labyrinth. So this is regarding Pakistan Supreme Court's decision to grant six months conditional extension to Chief of Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa. So immediate crisis has been averted. But uh, it is an embarrassment for Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. So, you know, complete disregard for procedural formalities and the constitution have been seen because it was of because it was of technical error because government gave it approval where it should come from the pre, uh, from the president as such and the, from the house. So that procedure was not followed. So that is why the Supreme Court raised question on that on the extension of term. Pakistan, it says, must ensure civilian command and control of its armed forces. So the army has uh, supported Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, is known. So now uh, the chief of army, uh, General Bajwa, has been given an extension of term, and independence of civilian government is important. So this editorial also talks of how civilian command and control of armed forces is essential, and that is what Pakistan should ensure. The lead article, not as you say, but as you do. So this is regarding India. How will it? India will now find it difficult to tough talk leaders in the neighborhood, all with strong mandates of their own. So especially with respect to Sri Lanka. So India Sri Lanka relations under the new government. How would it go ahead? Completion of projects, which are which should be a priority between India and uh, India and Sri Lanka. So we have these projects. India has planned to develop Trincomalee port and oil farms, oil tank farms, and then LNG terminals near Colombo. So these are the plants which India have, and it wants to counter Chinese investments in Sri Lanka. So that is a point raised. Here. It's not just Sri Lanka with other countries also like Maldives, Bangladesh, Nepal. China has got, got its presence felt now. So India must also put up its act, and this is India's food basket must pass. Food basket must be enlarged. So agro biodiversity can help improve countries' poor rankings in global hunger index. Is what this article is trying to say. 
So India ranks 102 in Global Hunger Index out of 117 qualified countries. So it is said nearly 47 million or 4 out of 10 children in India do not meet their potential because of chronic undernutrition or stunting. So it talks of agrobiodiversity, means diversity of crops and varieties. So this can help in food security and ensuring nutrition. Here you can see various forms of rice from Tamil Nadu, Assam, Kerala, Pukkali rice from Kerala, etc. are spoken of here. It is said micronutrients you know, are there in drumstick, moringa, then sweet potato is rich in vitamin A. There are variety of pearl millets and sorghum rich in iron and zinc. So they should be provided as such. Agrobiodiversity should be ensured. On op-ed page you have, should life convicts be denied remission? So this is a Pali coverage which is there every Friday. So here you have regarding those convicted for life. So can they be remitted or not? So it is said no one should be denied the benefit of remission, but proof of reform and sound reasoning are needed. So this happened in, Mara, in uh, Tamil Nadu. So in Tamil Nadu the government released these life convicts who were convicted of offence against uh, Dalits. So, they were uh, sentenced to life for massacre of six Dalit men in 1997. So, they have now been released on remission for good behaviour. So, this is a Pali coverage on news, counter views on the issue. Well, you have Protest against Industrial Relations Code Bill in Lok Sabha. So, Union Labor Minister uh, introduced the Industrial Relations Code Bill 2019 in Lok Sabha, but there were protests from opposition members who termed the bill anti-laborers and they demanded that it be referred to a parliamentary standing committee on labor. So, what this, uh, what the government is trying to do is it wants labor reforms, it wants to, uh, you know, con uh, it, it wants all 44 laws related to labor codes, laborers should be, you know, codified and concised into four codes. So, here, this is one of the codes on industrial relations. And here you have Rajya Sabha passes Chit Fund Bill. So, Rajya Sabha has passed Chit Funds Amendment Bill which increases the limit of Chit Funds to 3 lakh for those run, run by up to 4 individuals and up to 18 lakh for those operated by more than 4 partners. On page 13, you have Gotabaya in Delhi to meet Modi today. So, this is regarding Sri Lanka's newly elected president who is in India now so on his first visit abroad after he was sworn in as president. So, issues like security, development, cooperation and economic assistance are likely to come up for discussion. And this is ahead of royal visit, Sweden toughens stand on Kashmir. So, this is regarding Swedish royal couple. King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia who will be on a visit to India. So, before that, uh, uh, senior ministers from Sweden have sent their strongest message on Jammu and Kashmir so far, urging the government to lift all restrictions placed in Jammu and Kashmir and calling for involvement of Kashmiris for resolution of the issue. Then on international page you have Pakistan ex Supreme Court extends Army Chief's tenure. So, this was what we saw on the front page too. Today's editorial is also on this. So, this is there. And this is China threatens to retaliate after US passes Hong Kong law. So, US passed a law, legislation backing anti-government protests in Hong Kong. So, this has resulted in China summoning US envoy and agitators on the part have held a Thanksgiving rally. And this is US to cut spending on NATO, NATO budget, Germany to pay more. So US is cutting its contribution to NATO, which is not Atlantic Treaty Organization, it's a defense related cooperation organization. So it, uh, its operating budget, majorly its contribution come from USA, but now USA is cutting its contribution and Germany will pay more. So you can see. President Donald Trump has repeatedly criticized because NATO is North Atlantic means it's across the Atlantic between USA and European nations. It's a defense pact between them, among them. 
so it, president trump has repeatedly criticized european members for preloading on the us singling out germany the continent's economic powerhouse for lagging behind on an alliance commitment to spend at least 2% of gdp on defense so now washington you can see under nato presently pays 22.1% of its budget and germany pays 14.8% so this is going to change now US will cut its contribution from 22.1 to 6.16.35 and Germany will rise it to the same level to make up for it. Other allies will also pay more. Okay, so then this is students entrapped in Farmington case Warren. So this is regarding a fake university been established called Farmington University and uh, her students have been arrested in this case so its operation in michigan over the past few months have been questioned and it is said that operation was cruel and the students were entrapped so students simply dreamed of getting higher quality higher education in america so they are not the culprits but they are all students are also been arrested so there are use counter views on this too and many of them are from India, you can see. So, 129 of the 130 arrested were Indians. Then below you have 28 Iraqis killed after Iran's consulate torched. So, Iraq security forces have shot dead at least 28 protesters after demonstrators stormed and torched an Iranian consulate overnight. And this could mark a turning point in the uprising against the Iran-backed authorities in Iran. This, uh, these are regarding protests for democracy and for development taking place in Iraq. And here you have Maldives ex-president sentenced to five years in corruption case. So this is Maldives ex-president Abdullah Yamin who has now been sentenced to five years in prison for money laundering. So a, a corruption probe was initiated against uh, him. He was a former strongman ruler of uh, Maldives which is a luxury tourist destination so, in Indian Ocean. Here you can see now he was has been arrested in February on charges of money laundering and now he has been sentenced to five years in jail. And this is Sri Lanka to probe Swiss employees' detention. So Sri Lankan authorities said they are probing the recent incident of a Swiss embassy staffer detained in Colombo. So Swiss envoy raised the matter with the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka. Then there is no important news on business page. And also, the last page has sports related news. So, that is it. These are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website, ashara.com. Thank you.